Uh, at this farm, we have uh, majorly two enterprises uh, with the other smaller ones coming uh, that we also have here. But the main ones are dairy and the banana plant uh, growing. Uh, in dairy, we are doing, as you see, zero grazing, where we do cut and carry systems. So we bring in the pastures for these animals. And in the banana farming, we have uh, bananas, green bananas, covering a minimum of uh, seven and a half acres. Uh, my name is Nicholas Masiko. Uh, I'm the owner of Highmark Dairy Farm, which is located here in Rowienje. Kamshoko Bubare Kashari in Barara district. This farm started in 2004 when we started buying uh, the land here. Buy it both slowly, slowly pieces of land until we got the current acreage we are on. And in 2012, we started commercial zero grazing. Because at that time the land was small and we thought we would maximize our production if we went zero grazing. Uh, at one time we had hit about, uh, we had reached about 110 cows, but currently we have about 52 animals. Uh, the reason being that we sold off a number of cows to finance uh, other enterprises. One of them being uh, acquisition of a guest house in, uh, a guest house in Kampara, in Bukoto and the other one being acquisition of about uh, 10 acres of land which were neighboring our farm, which is, that's the recent one. Uh, at this farm we have uh, majorly two enterprises uh, with the other smaller ones coming, uh, that we also have here, but the main ones are dairy and the banana plant uh, growing. Uh, in dairy we're doing, as you see, zero grazing, where we do cut and carry systems, so we bring in the pastures for these animals. And in the banana farming, we have uh, bananas, green bananas, covering a minimum of uh, seven and a half acres. Six and a half acres being in one plot, then another acre that we was acquired with the new acquisition of land that was neighboring us. Uh, basically, that's what we do. Then we have also the smaller enterprises are here we are doing. We have a goat section, also under zero grazing. Uh, currently with about 56 goats. And uh, out of those, we have about 23 kid goats that are currently uh, in our young stock. Our plan is to make it a major enterprise and we are targeting a population of 500 goats. Those are the enterprises that we have, or maybe the crop section where we grow crops or pastures for these cows. We also have maybe a machinery a section of this farm Machines that we use at this farm, but we also hire to the community around us. These include the tractors for plowing, uh, also for silage making, uh, where we hire our equipment for farmers to do all these uh, various kinds of works, especially plowing, planting, spraying, and also silage making. Uh, at this farm, we, as I told you, I'm the owner, uh, we try to manage this farm uh, using the workforce that we have. I'm not permanently on this farm, but uh, in a month I'm always here, at least minimum two weeks. Uh, we have a manager uh, and an assistant manager who are responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the business. And then me, I do the supervision of the two. Uh, we have a workforce of 12 people, below the manager and the assistant, and those include the, the caterer who do, could, cooks for the, the team here, also the guys who do the day-to-day, -day. the tractor drivers, we have two tractor drivers, and also the other guys who do the day-to-day -day work at this farm. We also employ uh, casual laborers, especially when we are doing planting, weeding, and harvesting. Uh, when we started this farm, we invested in uh, acquire, acquisition of knowledge 
first, first and foremost to ourselves, we equipped ourselves with knowledge on the modern farming methods. Uh, with time, the community has started coming in to learn from us. So one, we provide information about farming to our community. We support the community through uh, access to equipment that they hire to do their own feeds. We also give the community access to pastures uh, that we have on the farm. Uh, at the same time, we give direct employment to members of our community. Uh, most of the workers you see around are coming from within the community. And we've also gone ahead to bring in people from as far as uh, the university. But uh, before we reach about the, uh, talk about foreign uh, employment, we also have available opportunities for training, especially to students who come here and do their internship, especially from Makere University, uh, Rentanga Farm School, Chitagata Farm School, and uh, other institutions around us. Uh, one of the things we do, or we've tried to invest in, is the plant, planting of trees especially perimeter along, along the perimeter of our farm and also subdividing some of the plots that we, we have. We've also tried to plant some windbreakers since we grow bananas to help us on the control of wind and also give us wood that we use as uh, supports in the plantation but also as wood fuel. So we, we've planted the, some of the varieties as uh, the fig trees We've also planted teak trees, which we got seedlings from Arua, which we have introduced here. But all this is to help us conserve the environment, as well as, uh, as, well as provide uh, other benefits, one of them being wood fuel. We also try as much as possible to see that we sort our waste. Uh, and in, in that regard, we are looking at the separation of organic waste and also the plastic and other waste, so that we don't mix up and pollute our environment. But as a zero grazing farm, we are emphasizing less usage of acaricide as a way of conserving our environment. Because when we keep these animals under zero grazing, we find that we have less incidences of ticks and we spray once in three months. We are trying to push this to spraying like once in six months, and if possible, if we can put it to one year, and prob probably do away with spraying. And in this, we have invested in fencing part of our land with a chain link to avoid some of the stray animals that would come in and bring these ticks that would be picked by our animals, especially the goats that still we, that we still allow to go out and and browse for some of these forages. So. Those measures we are trying, much as they are not directly influencing the environment, environmental protection, but we are thinking by listening on the use of these acaricides, we are in one way or another indirectly protecting our environment. We are also engaged in recycling of, uh, of some of the wastes that we generate at the farm. One of them, the unique one, is the, the urine. We've invested in trapping the urine, currently we're doing it the, in a crude way that we are using to fertilize some of our plots, especially the pasture plots. Uh, urine being a source of uh, urea, and urea being a source of nitrogen for these plants. So we are tapping that and using it to, to spray some of our plots. And on the experimental plots we've done, the, the results have been really resounding and very interesting. And we are now going a further step to engage the schools around our communities where we, by this farm is going to build uh, uh, standard urinals for the school and our benefit will be to tap, to tap the, the, the urine in the tank that will be transported to transport here, ferment, mix it with water, dilute it with water and then spray it using a boom sprayer in our pasture plots. In that way, we are going to minimize on the use of organic fertilizers in the end, boosting our soils and then protecting the environment. Uh, as you are aware, in 2015, we were voted among the best farmers in this country. Uh, we're actually the best in southwestern region, 
and we became third in the whole country. As a result of that, we got a chance to visit the Netherlands the subsequent year, which is 2016. Our trip was really, really wonderful, and I learned a lot on that trip. One of them was the work ethics that we found in the Netherlands. Straight from the plane, we embarked on the tour of the Netherlands. We never had a rest till we came back. 5 a.m. would be on the road, 7 p.m. would be back to the hotel. Day in, day out, and we'd look back at the number of hours we waste this side into some things that won't benefit our production. So one of the things I learned, and I still keep to this day, is the work ethics of the people I found in the Netherlands. Then also the commitment to their enterprises. It's something I learned. If someone is doing dairy farming, they are really doing dairy farming with a passion. Their, all their energies are dedicated to that, this. So the commitment to some of the enterprises they were doing is what we learned. The other thing is that I looked at and I was amazed by the level of technology and mechanization that was in the Netherlands. As an agricultural engineer, my interest somehow diverted to that. I looked at the technologies they were using, which we could not use here because of the level of development we are in, but I started, my mind started going, like working over time, see if we can adopt some of the technologies that I saw and then into our farming systems or into this country so that we could also scale up our production. So we took so much, I took so much interest in mechanization. At that time, in 2015, we had one old tractor. Currently, we have three tractors, including our old tractor. We acquired two more, and we have now uh, three tractors. That time, we didn't have a baler. We acquired a baler machine that does the baling of uh, hay at this farm. We didn't have a slasher, we acquired a slasher. We didn't have a rake, we acquired a rake. We have a number of machines, as you had seen. We bought forage chop, uh, chopping equipment. Now, after that, we started, we stopped by bringing in equipment for our farm, but we started now, we engaged fully in the equipment business as a way of also giving the same quality equipment to other farmers. As I speak, Highmark Uganda Limited, that was at that time dealing in the servicing and maintenance of generators, is now a fully fledged agricultural equipment supplier in the country. We dealt away with the generator business, the servicing and maintenance of generators, in, and have fully adopted into the supply and maintenance of agricultural machines. This has led us to impact a number of uh, farmers in the country. Uh, one through appropriate technology and quality machines, but we've also trained a number of young people who are into maintaining of maintaining of uh, maintaining of these machines, repairing of these machines, who are directly employed through HIMAC. We are now going into a stage where we are trying to create some groups that are going to be uh, that can that can is quickly buy easily buy from us and also use these machines for hire. We've also gone ahead to introduce a higher service for these machines, not only in, Uganda, in southwestern Uganda, where our farm is, but also in Kampara. For the farmers who are in Kampara and cannot afford these machines, we are putting up a service for them to hire these machines at an affordable rate. Uh, in this farming, we've, we, as farmers, of course, in this country, we on the worldwide, we face a lot of challenges in farming. The first one, the first one being the lack of cheap and affordable financing options. The cost of money in this country is high. Farming is not a business that is going to give you returns immediately. It takes time. Farming needs mechanization. You need equipment to lessen your production cost and also the time to produce certain things. The cost of acquiring machinery is so high that we've been able to, we, we, we've run into challenges, issues of having to sell off sometimes our stock in order to acquire certain uh, stuff like land or uh, tools of production, land or equipment. So 
That's the challenge number one, finance. If we can get affordable finance. We, farmers do not want free money, but we need affordable financing. That's challenge number one. Number two, climate and the, the weather. For example, if you, you've been to the plantation, you see my plantation now. We were recently three weeks, one month ago, three weeks, I think one month ago, we were hit by a severe hailstorm that destroyed our plantation, completely destroyed our plantation. Where we had about 200 bunches per month, we are even failing to get the matoke to feed our, our workers. Completely, it was destroyed. So those are challenges, unpredictable weather. We, last season in April, uh, the last April season, we planted 50 acres of maize and were destroyed by drought. That's why we don't have silage. And the, 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 that is a big, a bigger challenge. We also have another challenge that I would touch in that also affects our feed security at the farm, is that is labor, skilled and committed labor. The young people in this country, majority of the young people, are not committed to what they are supposed to do. For example, the beta we acquired, we acquired it expensively. It did a wonderful job. But you find through the negligence of an operator, this beta was completely, uh, not I wouldn't say completely destroyed, but it was damaged and the cost of repair is going beyond what we are making as a farm. But you see, we need the, the equipment itself and we need it running for, for us to have feed, feeds at the farm, for us to be able to maintain the, 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 the sales we are doing because the excess feed, let's say the excess hay, we would sell it. So the, the challenge is committed, lack of committed and skilled labor. It's a big challenge and we, we need to think as a country on how we can solve this problem. There is a big, another bigger challenge is the prices of milk in this region. If, if you are to sell milk here in this region, farm gate prices are low. They only tend to come up during the dry season, but when it's the flash period, the rainy season, then the prices go as low as 600, 800, 500 shillings. This is not conducive for our production and it's very, it's, it's a discouraging factor. But we are trying our level best to, to counter that through the reduction in the cost of production. How? How are we doing this? At Highmark, we've been privileged a little bit that uh, we've had the knowledge to mechanize, we've had the ability to mechanize, and we are even going an extra mile. As I speak, we have already acquired a forage harvester a forage harvester is something that will cut, chop, and dump the chopped material on another truck for conveyance to, the, to your storage system. In other words, it helps to cut the manual labor that we'll be using at this farm, we've been, that we've been using at this farm. For example, if we grow 50 acres of maize, we will need a minimum of 20 casual laborers to cut it down and also to heap it or feed it to the machines. With the acquisition of a forage harvester, that means the 50 acres will be harvested in three days with about four people. The tractor driver, his stand boy, the, the truck driver, and his stand boy. The rest of us, uh, my workforce, will remain this side only to flood, compact, and within three days we've covered and stored the, the 50 acres. Why are we doing this? We're, we're going through a painful situation to acquire these machines, just because we know if we reduce our cost of production, even with the little uh, prices of milk, we we'll still break even. Then when it comes to the dry season, when the prices of milk go high, then we we'll also make a, a meaningful profit for this farm. Uh, I, I, I want to take you, when, on, when you talk about the mission of the farm, is I want to take, a, take you to our, 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 our slogan here. We say high mark, dire farm, smart farming to feed the nation. I use the word smart farming because there are so many challenges that we face as farmers, or the farmers in this country are facing. So when you do smart farming, 
you will end up producing to feed the nation. Now, the innovations that we are em employing are as, result, are as, as a result of the challenges we face in, at this farm. One of them we talked about drought. Drought is affecting us. And now, plant, plowing, buying seed, planting, weeding, and then you lose 50 acres of a crop is a huge loss. Now, for that, we've tried to invest in our a mini irrigation system. Four acres of our, of our land is now currently under full irrigation, using a floppy sprinkler system from South Africa. It's costly. We've done, we've gone ahead to acquire an agricultural loan to finance that project. It's costly, but we know the returns are going to be good for us in time. We'll be able to harvest minimum four uh, times a, a year and we'll be growing constantly. And then we'll be able to feed our animals on what we get from that and the excess will be sold off. So that is one of the innovations. I told you also on the issue of recycling some of the wastes at the farm. And one of them is tapping into the potential of some of the things we use, like we, we waste out like urine, which is going to reduce on the cost of acquiring fertilizer in some of these instances. So uh, we also look at uh, our animals trying to breed using AI, an animal that is going to produce more in the circumstances that way we are in. In other words, you have your animal under zero grazing, the breed is good, the management, you've raised it in a better way, and its production is going to be higher, so that even when we give it a certain quantity of feed, the conversion rate from this animal into milk is higher. Those are things we are looking at. Also, employing machinery to reduce on the labor. Those are the kind of innovations we are trying to employ at this farm for us to be able to counter some of these challenges. That we have. Yes, looking at all this, I cannot say I'm the best of the best, neither can I say I'm not the best of the best. This depends on the people who come to see us and determine, look at what we do. If they feel we are the best, then we'll welcome that and we'll be happy with that. But even if we are not uh, the best of the best, we, we, are always, we will always remain farmers because we love farming and we know with farming is the only way we can easily get what we want without breaking a bone.